Welcome back to our learning course. In this lesson, we ask if animals learn slowly or quickly, and why. Like many questions, the answer is it depends. Sometimes animals learn quickly, sometimes very slowly. There are a few points I want to make in this class. The first is that learning quickly does not mean necessarily being smart. This table shows how quickly different species learn a simple task like turning left or right or choosing black over white. As you can see, the more we think an animal is smart, the more slowly it seems to learn in these tasks. This is not to say that bees or fish are smarter than rats and human babies. It just shows that sometimes the results of learning experiments need some thinking to be understood. A second thing I'd like to show is why learning more slowly can actually be better than learning quickly. The third thing is that we can understand many things about learning speed using the Rescola-Wagner model. As usual, I will just say RW instead of Rescola-Wagner. Please review the model before going on. Before looking into RW and the logic of learning speed, let's look at one example of fast learning and one of slow learning. Our example of fast learning comes from an experiment by Albert and Ma from 1972. Rats were made thirsty by restricting access to water, and then they were placed in a box with a nook. You can see a diagram here. This represents the box, this represents the nook, the X is what the rats could find in the nook, and the dot is the initial placement of the rat. There were three experimental groups, each finding a different thing in the nook. Rats in the water group found water, Rats in the new group found a new object, a small steel cylinder, and rats in the empty group found nothing. All rats spent at most 15 seconds in the nook, and then they were removed. So they really had limited time to learn what was there. 48 hours later, they were placed in the box for five minutes, and they were monitored to see how much they searched in the nook. As we can see, the rats that found water in the nook searched there much more than the others. This means that just one experience of just 15 seconds finding water was sufficient to learn its location. The purpose of the new group was to check that the rats really remembered finding water, as opposed to just remembering that the nook was not empty. As an example of slower learning, I'll show again this graph from Kogan and Kogan, from our lesson on Pavlovian conditioning. In this experiment, college students were instructed by their psychology professor to taste a sweet lemonade powder any time the professor said the word Pavlov. As you can see, it took more than 60 repetitions of this experience before about 90% of the students reported salivating a bit when hearing Pavlov. This is the first panel in the figure. The other two are described in the lesson on Pavlovian conditioning. I chose an experiment with humans as an example of slow learning to show that people don't always learn more quickly than other species. In this example, the pairing of lemonade powder and water had to be repeated many, many times before people learned about it. Let's now talk about how learning speed works in the Roscoe and Wagner model. As a quick refresher of how RW works, remember that the change in the associative strength of a CS is a fraction of the error that is perceived when the CS itself is followed by the US. Here, the CS is labeled as stimulus A. Please review the lesson introducing the Rescola Wagner model if you are not familiar with this idea. In that lesson, I showed how the RW learning equation makes the associative strength V grow as a result of many CS-US experiences. We used the value of 0.2 in that lesson for the parameter gamma, but we did not really say much about this gamma. The reason why I mention it here is that, as you might have guessed, gamma regulates the speed of learning. The graph above me shows how associative strength grows for three different values of gamma, 0.02 in yellow, 0.1 in red, and 0.5 in blue. As you see, a larger value means faster learning. We can understand this by remembering that gamma determines how much of the error is corrected with each CSUS experience. Let's look at the first experience, which is highlighted with a dot on the three learning curves. In all cases, V starts from zero, and the target lambda value is 100, so the initial error is also 100. When gamma is 0.5, the first change in V is 0.5 times 100, that is 50. So the associative strength jumps from 0 to 50 in just one experience. On the other hand, when gamma is 0.1, the first jump is only 10, and when gamma is 0.2, it is only 2. 
Another way of saying the same thing is that when gamma is 0.5, then 50% of the error is corrected with each experience. When gamma is 0.1, then 10% of the error is corrected, and when gamma is 0.02, only 2% of the error is corrected. Across many experiences, this means that the curve with gamma at 0.5 rises faster and the others more slowly. All of the curves will eventually get close to 100, but will do so at different speeds. Now, when they introduced their theory, Rosconi Wagner did not write gamma. Instead, they used two numbers, which they called alpha and beta. The number gamma that we have been using up to now would be the product of RW's alpha and beta, as indicated in this formula. RW did not do this to complicate your life. They used two numbers instead of one because they knew that learning speed depends on characteristics of the CS and of the US. So one number, alpha, describes the CS, and the other, beta, describes the US. Let's start from the CS. A typical finding is that animals learn more quickly if the CS has higher intensity, like a brighter light or a louder sound. For example, this graph shows the results of a study by Kaming and Schaub in which rats learned to be afraid of a sound that was followed by shock. The measure of learning used here is the suppression percentage that I introduced in the lesson on blocking. Please review that lesson if you are not sure what the suppression percentage means. The point we want to make here is that learning was slower with the soft sound, and that learning speed increased with the loudness of the sound. With the loudest sound, it took less than 10 experiences for the sound to suppress ongoing activity completely, while with the softest sound, it took more than 20 experiences. Apart from intensity, animals often have preferences and learn more quickly about some stimuli than others. We saw this in the lesson on overshadowing. In RW, these preferences can also be explained by using a different alpha for different stimuli, as we will see in a future lesson. For the US, beta works in the same way as alpha does for the CS. For example, this graph shows the results of another fear conditioning study with rats by Yang and Fancelo. Here, learning was measured by looking at whether the rat froze when hearing the CS. But here, the CS was always the same. What changed across groups was the intensity of the shock US. We can see that the rats that got larger shocks learned more quickly to be afraid of the CS. Like for CSs, animals also have preferences about USs, and we learn more quickly about some things than others. For example, a dog would learn to salivate more quickly to a nice juicy steak than to some other food it doesn't like that much. At this point, some of you might be thinking, if animals can measure the error they are making, why don't they correct it right away? Why wait 50 or even 100 trials before responding with full strength? The reason is that natural environments are messy, and often you cannot trust a single experience. Imagine you are Pavlov's dog in the usual experiment. At some point, between ringing the bell and giving you food, Pavlov sneezes. <coughs> the point is that the sneeze would be accidental and would not be a good signal for food. These things happen all the time. Sometimes it's Pavlov sneezing, sometimes an assistant coughing, sometimes someone knocks on the door, and so on. So if the dog learned to salivate to the stimulus after just one experience, it would often learn associations that do not reflect the real facts of the world. When there are a lot of chance events in the environment, it is good to learn slowly, to make sure you are only learning something that is real. A related question is, why do animals have preferences and learn quickly about some things and slowly about others? You can study the lesson on overshadowing for an answer to this question. Note that when we say that animals learn at a speed that is appropriate to what they are learning about, we don't mean that they are aware of this. Rather, their genes have set up their brains so that learning is faster in some cases and slower in others. These genes are the product of evolution, in the sense that animals with the best learning rates for their environment could learn more effectively, and eventually this resulted in better survival or higher reproduction. This means that genes that set appropriate learning speeds have an advantage in evolution and eventually outcompete genes that set suboptimal learning speed. In this lesson, we have increased our understanding of animal learning by looking at why learning is sometimes fast and sometimes slow. We have also seen how fast and slow learning are achieved in the RW model. 
The best lesson to study next is the lesson that shows how animals can learn about more than one stimulus at a time. This lesson will be the last one on the RW model. This lesson is over. Happy learning to everyone. Thank you.